All right, and welcome to the Hollow Tide podcast, a Halloween show um, where where we're discussing all things Halloween. And today I have director and producer Andrew Gadjdar of the Carolina Film Network with me. And today we're going to ask a very important question. Does the costume make a man? Um, but before we dive in, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and check out our other our, our other videos on this channel. Definitely check out the Movie Pope podcast where we review movies and interview people in the industry it's a great way to learn how, how to be a filmmaker and you get to learn all the ins and outs of what it means to be a filmmaker actor producer director whatever um but other than that let's go ahead and dive in andrew halloween is around it was what two weeks away ish yeah pretty much have, have you um have you gotten your costume yet or is that something you're uh working on or have you decided you know what so I've Costumes. been the same, the same thing for like the past, like, I want to say seven or eight years. And what's that? <laughs> I, um, about, I guess about eight years ago, I got a, cu a custom made, uh, gorilla suit, a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the, the, the head of the gorilla mask, like mm -hmm. the moves and everything. Like, it's pretty cool. And uh, we we so I pretty much I'm a big gorilla every every Halloween. So 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 That's just our so just our curiosity. Why did why did you settle on on gorilla? Like what made I'm you decide I'm gonna go with that? I'm a big guy. Um, and two of my favorite um, uh, uh, cartoons when I was little was uh, Magilla Gorilla mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and Grape Ape. <Ape's. laughs> I remember those. I would, I would, I was like, uh, you know, I got when I got bigger. It's like, man, I'm a, I'm a big guy. I'm like six two over four hundred pounds. I'm like, yeah. When people see me in a costume, it's like, what costume could I possibly be where it's cool to be big? And so, right. uh, the the big the costume that I decided was like, I was like, oh, I'll just be like, I'll be like um, King Kong, be like a big gorilla. Right. Uh, and so uh, that's what I did. I got a, I got a custom. Uh, uh, costume made <laughs> of a big gorilla like King Kong. I mean, because that's the thing. Because when you pick a costume, it it reflects who you are, you know, as a person. It's it's, it's kind of like with fashion. It's like the outfit that you wear tells tells you know the outside world, hey, this is who I am as a person. But um, so so um, so since we're talking about costumes today, have you um? Have you ever been in a situation where you've kind of had to agonize, like, what's the right costume for me? Like when, when uh, like when you were a young one, even, like, even before, even or even after, even being an adult, I've, I've um, you know, like being a big guy, like it's not easy for me to find a costume. And that's where it all started from. I was like, I was battling between being, um, um, oh, what's his name, uh. From the labyrinth, um, Ludo. Ludo. I was, okay. I was like, I was like, oh man, it'd be cool to be Ludo from the labyrinth. But I was like, man, I don't have like animatronics and all of this stuff to make this big old, you know, to, to make a, a legit Ludo costume. And this yeah. is the I started seeing people who made Ludo costumes. So it was like, it was like, oh man, it, it, it was a big battle in my head. But it's always been a battle in my head, being a bigger guy, like. What costume? What kind of costume to get? Um, you know, what do I want to invest in? Because costumes don't be, they don't come cheap. No, no, <laughs> and, and, and 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 that's and that's the thing that 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 you know that kind of staggers me. Just because it's you, you know, it, it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know in October, but like when you go to these um huge conventions, you just see people like dressed up in these fancy elaborate costumes, and and, and you wonder, wow, like. That is that is dedication right there to just yeah, cosplay to just create that. Expensive. The, I, I've seen a lot of people who who've gotten very inventive, and you know, like they make their own cosplay, like um, costumes and stuff like that. But generally speaking, that stuff is it, it can get really, really expensive. It's an investment. Yeah, I mean, you're investing your time and money in, in, yeah. in, into that thing. So yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah, because um, because when I was a kid. And you could and you could probably um, attest to this as well. When 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 you're a kid, it's you know getting a costume is just so easy because you're 
your scope is a bit more limited. I remember, yeah. I remember going to Party City, and I was like, "Hmm, what do I want to be? Choices, choices. Oh, I know. I'll be the I'll be the White Power Ranger this year. Uh, yeah. No, I'll be I'll be a vampire. Um, have you? I, I, I mean, I mean, have you ever had that um, experience? I think I was a vampire for most of my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's like the easy thing. It's like you need know, capes and a fang. Yeah, he was some fangs, and a, and I actually have. It's funny. I actually still have custom fangs that I had made molded to my teeth. Uh, and I still have them. I still now, have them to this day. Now did you make them yourself or did someone help you make them? No, nah, they're 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 like uh they're like just custom material uh that you mold to your actual teeth. Oh it's, I see it's I real see teeth um and everything and, and it, it was man that, that had to be like uh that was like twenty one years ago Oh wow! Oh, shit. I have That's going way back. <laughs> still, still have them. I still to this day have them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, but I mean, but but that's but that's the thing because you know, you know, because buying a Halloween costume shouldn't be stressful, right? Like, uh -huh. like you should have because you have an idea in your head, and then you and and then you either get the costume or you make it. But yeah. I, I I've talked to I've talked to people over the years, and people have just agonized over it. I mean, the the way they go about it, it's kind of like. It's kind of like deciding, oh God, which child, you know, which child am I going to save, and which one am I going to give up to the to the secret police? I'm like, really? That's it's <laughs> a bit heavy handed, right there. <laughs> um, I, I, but I, but another thing too is the fact, you know, is the fact that when it comes to, you know, is that when it comes to costumes, yeah, it's very impressive when you you know spend all this time and money, yeah. but you're spending it on an outfit you're only going to use maybe once or twice a year, you know. Yeah. I, I um that that again goes back to why I chose to be a vampire most of my life. Yeah. Like black, black suit. <laughs> you know, it's like maybe throw in a, a little bit of a jewelry, I guess. Um mm -hmm. maybe some white face paint with some like red lips or something like but it's not it's not extremely difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that suit all year long. And that's what I did all the time. So it was like, that was an easy choice for me. But then it's, I also, you know, battled with, you know, what, what looked appropriate for a guy my size. It's like, I'm not, I'm not going out there wearing like, uh, um, I don't know, Daisy Dukes or something like that. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to go out there and like make a fool of myself, you know, just to be cool at a party. But uh, you know, people people come up with some crazy ideas. I know um, it was a joke. It was a joke uh, from I think I saw it on like Comic View like twenty something plus years ago, mm -hmm. uh, where they said uh, it's like a comedian said something about a kid uh, dressed in all black with a red dot on his head um, asking for candy at the door, and he's like, "What are you?" He's like, "I'm a beeper," and he started. <laughs> 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 like it's like man when you ain't when you don't have a lot of money for a bunch of ideas people will come up with something people will definitely come up with something yeah i remember one year um i think this was like 96 or 97 um i i decided i decided to dress up as um as hercule poirot the um the detective and i and and, and i remember um i remember just walking next to my friends and they all kept looking at me i'm like what and they're like that's not really a costume. You're just wearing a you're just wearing a suit with a fake mustache. I'm like, I mean, I'm in disguise. You know, I'm you know, I'm I'm nine years old. People aren't going to know it's me. It's not like it's not like you see yeah. nine year olds walk around the neighborhood with like a big honking mustache yeah. know, every day. <laughs> but um, but but you know, but going back to what you said earlier, I mean, I, I, I mean. You know, being a gorilla, that kind, of, that, that, that kind of that kind of works to your to your advantage because of your of your size and your frame. Yeah. I mean, have have you ever have you ever had a situation where where you wore a costume that, you know, that com that was a complete mismatch? Like, I don't know. Did you did, did you decide to dress up as um as little Bo Peep or something, or or dress <laughs> up as Edward Cullen from Twilight? Let's see. Um, well, when <laughs> it's kind of funny actually, when I was a kid. Um, and I mean, like, probably around nine, ten years old. Um, my mother was a drill sergeant, um, in the military. Okay. 
um, we couldn't like afford like costumes. We would always, I would put, we would like put on her uniform, you know? So I'm wearing a female's uniform, a <laughs> military uniform going to trick or treat, <laughs> you know? So for me, that was, that was a mismatch as a kid. It's like, you know, <laughs> wearing a, a female drill sergeant's hat, which it looks completely different from a male drill sergeant's hat. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say because I, <laughs> Be, 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 because when I, because when I've seen it, I I figured with the military, like everything is kind of standard, you know. It's like, you know, like what you know what, what a female soldier wears isn't too different from uh from what a male soldier wears. Yeah. But you were effectively cross dressing, basically. Uh, not full on, I guess, but it, but, <laughs> but it's kind of funny, like because we because you like we where we grew up, we would live right by um right by the base. Right, right. So, a lot of <laughs> would actually go trick or treating either on post or right outside of post where we live, where there's a lot of other people who are in the military in our neighborhood. So you got military, you got military personnel that's looking at you as a boy. <laughs> no, you're in <laughs> They're shaking their heads and like that boy ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> that boy ain't right. <laughs> that boy got in his mama he got in his mama's uniform. You know he does. <laughs> I mean, but but just to make sure, just, just just so we clear clear the air, your mother did know you were wearing it, right? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not like you trotted in and she was like, "What the hell are you yeah. wearing?" She, de she definitely knew. She definitely knew. She was like, "Y'all want to wanna wear it? That's fine. I don't care. It's one night, and I'm not spending a bunch of money on a costume for y'all. So I'll figure it out." I can imagine the conversation the following day where they just came up and they're like, uh, ma'am, um, we saw your son. Like, is, is he all right? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't care. They didn't care. This was, this was like, this was like the 80s, the late eighties, early nineties. They didn't care. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh man. So, so, um, I, I remember talking, I remember talking to someone, um, a few years back. This is, this is when I was in college. So I think it was like, Oh eight or oh nine, mm -hmm. um, and 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 I remember we were just we were just chatting. This was like a few days before Halloween, and we're, and we we're like, you know what? There's nothing to do. Like, do you wanna do you wanna go get hammered? You know, at the bar because there were plenty of bars um, near yeah. the college campus. So we went, and when we walk in, and they're like people like dressed, you know, you know, decked out in costumes and everything. And I was just like, I is this really necessary? Because <laughs> I mean, I mean, I because you can sort of understand the logic of of, of dressing up to get candy. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> do you um do you have any opinions about uh, about whether or not it's appropriate to to wear a costume when you go into a bar? Like, yeah, anything at all. Yeah. The only thing that I'll say is that it's kind of important to make sure that whatever that costume is, you're able to hold on to your keys, your wallet, your cell phone. Because <laughs> I mean, like. For it, like that gorilla, that gorilla um suit that I wear, mm -hmm. pockets. <laughs> so I I would never wear that to a bar because that means I'm going to be in a bar with a bunch of people. I'm already in a hot gorilla suit, and I'm and in order for me to hold on to my my ID, my money, my keys, and everything, I means I got to wear an extra pair of pants underneath it that got pockets. So yeah. I don't even make any sense. That wouldn't make any sense to me. See, I thought you were—I thought you were going to say, you know, it's—it's, it's, you know, it's—it's—it's it's, it's a good idea to wear a costume in case you get into any, um, shall we say, tricky situations. I thought that's <laughs> where you were going with. No, nah, no, nah, nah, I think I think it's I think it's an all fun. You know, people want to feel young again. They want to feel like they can have their alter ego, you know, express who they who their alter ego is. You know, some people might be kind of shy. When I the very first business that I actually created was mm -hmm. the concierge business, and um, basically it was like I would I took the time to like study um, my city and my state of like where all the the art houses were, where all the museums were, where all the clubs were, bars were, um, historical monuments, um, just the, the, the gardens, zoos, all that stuff. So that I could, um, so that I could uh, take people out, you know, for either like a, a weekend um, or a night out of the town or a whole week vacation uh, or staycation, if you would, like, um, because when I I did this when I was working at a civil engineering firm right after I got out of the military, 
And um, I realized a lot of those civil engineers, like they came from school, like directly from school to being an engineer. And they're like super antisocial. A lot of them were just super antisocial. And um, a lot of them, you know, they like they may have moved to um, to Columbia where I live, they may have moved here. Uh, like maybe a couple years ago, but they don't even know where to go. They don't know what to do. I, I used to have conversations with people. They were like, yeah, man, I have no clue what there is to do around here because I never go out. I have my workload is so is so strenuous. I literally have like barely any time to go out. They have no life, basically. Yeah, it's like, I don't have a life. So I, it, it, it kind of inspired me to create that business because I was like, at the time, I was working for the firm, but I was also because I was a land surveyor for the firm. It was a civil engineering firm. Mm -hmm. But I, so I had like, you know, I had a lot more time on my hands. Um, but at the same time I was doing that, I was also doing contract and security and executive protection, working at a bunch of clubs um, cele for a bunch of celebrities coming into South Carolina. I was protecting all these. So I had a lot of connections. So I knew where to go. I knew who all the people were to talk to. And so it was just, I had this, idea i was like oh i can create a concierge business and you know kind of enhance my knowledge about the area a lot more and make some money charging these people to take them out and so that's what i did and i realized when they were out you know creating that that environment for them almost was like giving them a platform for an alter ego so i would help open them up a little bit more Socially, I would help break the ice for them. Like we would go when we go to a, a club, they would they, they wouldn't have to stand in line, straight VIP, already have a reservation in the VIP section, bottle service. The owner of the club comes and says hi to them because they're spending money for it, and they open up. You see now you see these quiet engineers that are like hermits <laughs> that are now like opening up. So it's like. I can see people at Halloween and stuff like that, that that's something like that for them where they're, they're able to like express themselves and just open up and let loose wearing some costume that makes them feel like somebody completely different, you know, away from the kids or away from the stress of work and everything else and just enjoy themselves looking like somebody else. Right. <laughs> so, so, so a question I, I, I you know, I, I want to ask is, so, so come Halloween, did you like, did you like, you know, show up at their house with a costume and be like, here, put this on, we're going to a club tonight, <laughs> you're, you're dressing up as a gorilla. <laughs> Everything was planned to the T, like I would ask them questions, like they would, I would have, I had a questionnaire where I'd ask them like all of these specifics, like what are your likes, dislikes, what are your food allergies? What are your, you know, what are what are some allergies you may have, or what are the things that you want to do, or what's on your bucket list, or what's this, what's that? Like I had a questionnaire that yeah. they pulled out, and then um, I would do the the groundwork. I would do my research, do the groundwork, make all the connections in the background. So everything was planned. They had an itinerary and everything. So like they wouldn't have to worry about being drunk. Like I'd have a I'd, I'd have a limo. Like I had a contract with a limo company. I actually still use the same limo company for um, uh, premieres that we do for movies and stuff like that now. Um, yeah. But um, I use a limo service, pick them up. So I could literally be out there with them, partying with them, drinking with them, making sure they have a good time, making sure they're safe. Yeah. I, and I also work for an executive protection company. So they're literally they're literally partying with somebody who's in the position to protect them at the same time. So it's like, it was the funnest thing ever. And I actually, <laughs> I moved, that's when I moved back to New York um, in 2000, it was like two, the end of 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, I was moving the business to New York because all the more connections that I had in New York and how much more I could blow the business up. But that's when the recession hit. Oh yeah, 2008, <laughs> 2009. Yeah, it, it, the recession, it, the recession hit. Like I had all my stuff in storage. I done moved out of my house, and I was going up there to New York. And I had already, like, I had already left my job, and I was doing this full time. Um, I was doing um, executive protection and doing my concierge business full time. Went to New York, and everything shut down. I was like, oh, I was hiring freeze everywhere. I ended up um, doing. Um, 
security and all that stuff up there. And then I was like a manager at Macy's, some other stuff like that. But it was like everything that I had that was going great for that stopped. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's like you were this close. This yeah, close. I had this, <laughs> but it's like, man, it's like a really cool idea. And I was having this great time with people. And then um yeah, it just it just it just kind of fell through. Um but I ended up moving back shortly thereafter when just things just kind of spiraled out of control and I, I moved back uh to Columbia, South Carolina and uh I've been I mean I I re I re um opened the business and just changed the things that I did with it. And I've been pushing it ever since. Right, right. I mean that sounds that sounds pretty cool. I actually might actually might uh might want to take advantage of that service at some point. Just like, yeah, I'm just an out of town guy, you know. Where are you from? No, I don't know, Salsalito. <laughs> You're never gonna see me again. Um yeah. it's so, like have you seen um the the movie um uh Bachelor Party Vegas. Is it is it kind of like The Hangover? Um, a similar kind of sorta, of, but it's like these guys are going on a bachelor party in Vegas, and basically they they link up with a guy who um, who's basically a party planner, and um, they end up being going through like this gauntlet of like bad things happening to them uh, throughout their whole time that they're there to, for their bachelor party. And um, they're like, it makes it seem like what was like, it may, they started out in the um, casino and uh, like the, the managers like grabbed them and they were like, oh, y'all are counting chips. And also the kind of stuff like, no, we're here on the package of, the, of this party planner. And, and he's like, they're like, um, like, no, you're not. And then they end up getting like, like they end up trying to kill them and they get chased all through Vegas. And all this other kind of stuff, like, oh man, this guy was a fraud, and like all oh, this crazy stuff. And it's like at the very end of it, that was the adventure. Like the party planner planned all of that stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but then they have this amazing adventure, and it all ended up at the very end. They all the stuff that they was like really close to have to being able to do throughout the whole film, they were all able to just massively party at the end with the party planner at the end. And it was like this genius thing. But I basically did the same thing in real life. <laughs> basically I did the same thing in real life. I, I planned these, I planned these uh these uh yeah, these these things. So it's like if, if, if I was able to do that for Halloween, ooh, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I mean I mean I mean do you, I mean do you think that that's something you might um that might be in the um I don't yeah, know. In, in the future or I've never thought about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, Halloween's. I mean, Halloween is a you know is a huge money making holiday. I think, sure I think is. it's, I think it's only second after um, after Christmas. You know, yeah, it sure is. Like I've, I've, like people do. You know the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, um, uh, what are those dinners? Um, those murder mystery murder, dinners. Murder mystery dinners. Yeah. And stuff like that all the time. You know, and then you have like escape room and. All this other kind of stuff. So, like stuff like that, the the those type of things or whatever, I've always been into. So that I could see, I could see you doing some sort of like modified version of a murder mystery where you you know where a crime is committed, you know, and you, you know in one part of town, and everybody's got to travel to these different locations yeah. to find clues. You gotta, I could see, you gotta I could see you doing that. You got to have a a, holo, a Halloween like drink fest. Like a like a Halloween Oktoberfest <laughs> to make it through this gauntlet. Just just put them all together. Uh, oh, you know you know what you, you know will be even more interesting because you know in England they celebrate Bonfire Night. I think yeah. that's like on November fifth because it celebrates um, Guy Fox attempting to blow up Parliament. Maybe you should incorporate some of that in there, kind of include a little bit of international flair. So it's like, yeah. So now we're going to this go, going to this place where we're going to meet a guy who may or may not have like you know tons and tons of gunpowder, but um. <laughs> But um, but yeah, but yeah, you're gonna look for the clues to get out of here, and you'll have um 45 minutes to do that. Yeah, I could definitely see you doing something like that, Andrew. Um, uh, so so another thing I want to ask you: so what's the Halloween scene like in Colombia? Because you know, because being you know being here in North Carolina, I'm 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 used to he I'm, I'm used to hearing about Franklin Street, like up in Chapel Hill, and then you've and then you've got you know the you know the Biltmore Estate over over in Asheville, and then you've got the Charlotte scene. What what is it like over in Colombia? 
Is this lively? I'd say the biggest thing here is like haunted houses. Like people go to haunted houses every year. Like they'll they'll do the haunted house thing. And then some people will dress up, you know, downtown or whatever. But generally speaking, people just people just go out and drink. They don't really like the the thing that sucks about Columbia is that there's no real art district here. Mm-hmm. Like, there's like you you can't say like this one specific district is dedicated to the arts. So like even though they have like art crawls and stuff like that, they're not real great, you know. And so they do some stuff uh, downtown, but general generally speaking, it's when you look around at people, maybe some of the younger people. Um, but some of the older, some of the older folks, like they just go out and drink. They just kind of have an excuse to go out and drink or take some time off. Uh, people do house parties all the time. Um, right. And generally, like I said, they go to, they go to, um, they go to these haunted houses or haunted cornfields and stuff like that, um, that they have. Um, and they just, they end early, they end early and then they go out. <laughs> that's what that's what I really really hate is the fact that you know, Halloween, you know, a lot of events in you know in Halloween they they kind of end too early. I'm like, no, it should not yeah. end early. This is supposed to be a night of of mayhem and revelry. Yeah, yeah. Because I know um because 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 Charleston's really really big with with the ghost tours, you know, just because oh, yeah. it's a much older city. But really, like with literally shot Halloween in Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Andrew. I think I think your I think your your mission now is to just try to you know turn Columbia into like the Halloween party capital of South Carolina. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It, gotta figure it out now. Because <laughs> I mean, like, because I mean, like, we were this close. Because when I was in school, we were this close to going to Chapel Hill to Franklin Street just to just to hang out and party, yeah. like that close. But you know, it's it's could have, would have, should have. Um. So um. So I want to go ahead and um, um, I'm just just go ahead and wrap it up. But um, but I did want to ask you. So, are are there any particular? Is there anything particular that, that you're going to do um this year for Halloween, or is it just going to be you sitting in a bar in a gorilla costume, just looking around, being like, "What's up?" <laughs> uh, well, doing Ghoulish Oktoberfest with uh, Carolina Film Network. I mean, that's pretty much that is our Halloween, pretty much. So we got ten ten um filmmakers from North and South Carolina uh, competing for awards um, that were, they're, they're all doing shorts, short films that are under mm-hmm. five minutes long. And um, it's, they have to be fall themed and they have to use either one or we give them two genres and they have to either use one of the genres or combine the two genres and still make it fall themed. Um, and um, that'll be, I believe that's the 28th of October. I believe it's the 28th of October. Yeah. Uh, and we'll be screen- so we'll screen all of the films at the movie theater at Spotlight Cinemas where we have a partnership with, um, and just like a regular little small little film festival. It's not it's not on film freeway or nothing. It's mm-hmm. just a fun festival that we put together every year um, um, for for filmmakers to just kind of test their mustard and just kind of get have some fun with it, and uh, in a short you know short period of time. We only have like a couple of weeks to put it together. Yeah, and um, and sometimes. Like we try to promote it, like, hey, you know, wear a costume. But usually, that turns out to be me, <laughs> the only one there <laughs> in this gorilla costume by myself. <laughs> so I may or may not wear it. I don't know. It depends on how hot I am this year. <laughs> but well, uh, well, I don't know what it's like over there. But I know, um, I know, I know it's supposed to be like in the '60s up here in Charlotte on on yeah. Halloween Day. So <laughs> it's been feeling pretty good lately. Yeah, well, especially with all the rain. But 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 I was gonna say, like, have you um, has it ever crossed your mind to maybe kind of put something in the bottom that says, you know, must come in costume or must wear a scary T-shirt? Ah, nah, we just want people to have fun because we yeah. said we said because we did that I think last year yeah. and the year before. Nobody came in the costume. Nobody did. <laughs> it was, it was me again. It's like me again. And I don't even think last year I wore it because um, we didn't have that much participation. And then, of course, like with COVID and all that other stuff, it yeah. kind of a little bit too. But generally speaking, um, Ghoulish Oktoberfest is like one of our better or more more attended events, I guess you can say. Oh, like it's Freedom Festival, of course, is our biggest. And then Ghoulish Oktoberfest is usually a pretty good, pretty good attendance. Um, 
and it's just fun. It's just a time for us to just kind of have fun and hang out together. And, yeah. Uh, so we sometimes after we do it, after it's over, like we may go out and have some drinks or go to a, a bar or a restaurant or something like that. But I don't know. We we um I don't know, maybe because I'm a little bit older now and I got all these kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Nobody yeah, the kids are like uh, yeah, I I can imagine the kids just like walking walking in November, you know, the yeah. morning of November first. They're like, huh, there's a there's a gorilla sleeping on the couch with beer bottles all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And like we do, we do a lot more stuff at the house now. So like we'll we'll invite people over to our house. And because I cook, um, because like I'm like a private chef, so like I when I I cook like a lot of great food for people, invite people over, and we'll have some, you know, we'll have some drinks and just kind of hang out. Um, and you know, like maybe if they want to wear a costume, come to the house, they can. But yeah, we can. We do the house thing now. We we just feel it's safer. You know, my kids are are teenagers. We'll we'll. I take that back. I have one that's in college, um, in Clemson, and then I have uh, two of them that are in high school, and then I have you know a two year old that he's definitely going to want to go trick or treat and stuff like that. But like the teenagers are like, we don't really care. <laughs> like so, we, and I so know what is she's definitely going to be at some bar or something at Clemson. I know that. I mean, uh, Clemson's a big party school. I've, <laughs> at least, at least that's what I've heard. Um, so, and, 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 and I know, and I know with college students, I mean, you, you, I know with college students, I know, I, I know the costume thing isn't big, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't yes, hurt. she will more than likely be in Greenville. I'm, I'm sure she'll be in Greenville. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so one last question I was going to ask you. So have you, have you picked up your uh, pumpkin yet or are you kind of waiting Oh, I got a couple of these little cute ones. <laughs> I got a. Uh, we're waiting because we we got little tiny ones, uh, mm -hmm. two year old, um, and then uh, right before we'll go get a big one. Do uh, you go to the store? Or do you get them at the? Yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll go to. Uh, I'll go on Fort Jackson, and uh, and get and get them from the commissary because they're. I mean, it's it's a lot easier to get them there. <laughs> and um, my son, my two year old. He likes to jump on the table and like <laughs> mess with stuff. So if I had a big pumpkin, I'm sure it it would probably be dropped if I yeah. get it. <laughs> well, Andrew, I, I, Andrew, I just want to thank you for taking the time to um, come on to this podcast to talk about um, costumes and, and Halloween traditions. And so, best of luck um, to you with um, with your um, film festival. I'll definitely put the links in the description below. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for. Um, for taking time to watch this podcast and if you have any um particular ideas or if you want, want to let us know what your favorite costume is let us know in the comments below but other than that stay safe have a great halloween and catch you on the flip side bye <sighs>